Hello and welcome from the University of Nottingham. Today we're going to deliver a presentation on integrating traditional and digital teaching approaches using augmented reality to create escape rooms. I'm Laura Nicholson and I'm joined by my colleague Stefan van der Viva and we form part of the learning technology team. As this is a global event, I feel we should just let you know a little bit more about the university for those who aren't based in the UK. So to add some context, the University of Nottingham has 34,000 students across three campuses and the learning technology team supports staff and students to make the most of our supported learning technologies. To explain our starting point to this escape room, I just want to return to the title of our presentation, in particular, integrating traditional and digital teaching approaches. After much research, high costs seem to be a repeatedly cited barrier to implementing AR technology in education, due to significant investment in hardware and software and acquiring the necessary technological expertise. This is such a shame as AR presents unprecedented opportunities for enhancing learning by creating interactive and immersive learning environments which not only have the potential to appeal to today's multimodal Generation Z students, but it also facilitates the enhancements of communication and teamwork skills. So our starting point in designing this escape room and overall objective was to set about bridging this gap between traditional and digital teaching approaches in a way that would try to minimise investment in software and not require the perceived advanced technical skills. So in essence, we wanted to start merging tools in traditional teaching methods with the HoloLens to provide more opportunities to use AR in education. The escape room we have created consists of a group of seated participants and a HoloLens wearer. And that's just me there demoing the HoloLens for those who aren't familiar with the headset. For sustainability purposes and to minimize cost, we use just one HoloLens per escape room group. This doesn't mean that people in the group are sat about watching the HoloLens wearer. We've designed this to ensure that everyone is required to be involved and the HoloLens wearer and other participants must work together. They cannot escape the room without each other. The reason the HoloLens works so well with this escape room design is because of the augmented reality aspect in that you can put on the headset and still see everything in the room. So discussions, observations and teamwork are very much key elements. To meet our objective of merging traditional, already familiar teaching tools with the digital world of AR, we opted to use Xerti as a platform to create the escape room. Xerti is open source and has an accessible interface with multiple interactivity options, and I'll show you some of these on the next slide. No advanced coding skills are necessary to create this escape room, which again was a key objective during the design process. This enables our escape room to act a bit like a stepping stone for those wishing to use more AR in their teaching, but don't have the advanced technology skills. The HoloLens wearer and seated participants work through a Xerti course together. For the seated participants, this is access through a laptop. And for the HoloLens wearer, this is projected onto holographic screens all around the room. To add a little bit of fun and mystery, the seated participants and HoloLens wearer have access to different clues and hints and this just increases the interactivity and collaboration between everybody. I'll play the video in just a moment but first I want to outline the basic structure of our escape room. So storytelling generates an immersive and emotionally impactful experience which is known to increase effectiveness in learning and forms the cornerstone of this escape room. The escape room is based on learning about cardiopulmonary resuscitation and begins with a message that the CPR mannequin, which is needed to deliver crucial training at the grand opening of an event, has been lost and it's up to the heartbreak heroes, the students, to begin an impromptu rescue mission to find it. So now I'll take you through a quick demo of some of the features of this escape room, all about CPR. You can see the view through the HoloLens here. We've added a couple of Xerti screens and you can just point at the screens to resize and move around if you wish. And you can still see everything in the room all around you. Here we've used Xerti's hotspot interactivity to create a scene where the participants need to decide who to speak to. Some will reply using text. And for others, we've used an AI generated video to make the story seem more lifelike. 
I mentioned that the seated participants and HoloLens wearer have access to different clues. Well, this is a paragraph sorting activity based on CPR. If the paragraphs are placed in the correct order, the paper can be turned over to reveal a map as to where the CPR mannequin could be. But it's not that easy. Solving the riddle reveals that there's some invisible ink on the page, so they have to use a UV light to find the exact location to travel to. Progression to the next screen is blocked until they have found the code on the map. The quizzes can take various forms. This one is called Here's the Answer, What is the Question? The participants must work together to discuss their ideas and the HoloLens wearer also has access to extra clues if needed. There's also the option to do drag and drop activities, although easier for the seated participants to do this one as it is difficult for the HoloLens wearer to do the drag and drop action. And there's also crosswords as one of the many other interactive options. We've also tapped into the benefits afforded by having multiple screens set up by hiding clues around the room. Here, a code is hidden behind a screen. As we've progressed with this escape room, we've started to find more ways to make it increasingly more immersive, using the potential to bring concepts alive. For this, we've turned to 3D modeling. We can still meet our objective of creating an escape room without the need of technical knowledge, because there's multiple platforms available on the internet which have some great 3D models that can be downloaded for free and then added to the room. Or if you have some 3D modeling skills like Stefan, he has an interesting way you can add even more AR interactions into the escape room. So as Laura mentioned, we looked at extending and enhancing the learning with new digital tools and digital approaches. So as part of the augmented reality extension, we an enhancement, I looked at 3D models and with this model, we did some interactions. So I want to show you that I downloaded this model from the internet and this was a full human skeleton. So because our presentation is about uh, CPR, we wanted to end up with the rib cage. So here I am removing the parts of the skeleton that we did not want to use. And we're going to end up with the ribs and I want to take you into the materials. So there you can see the ribs and I'm going to open up the materials panel now. And in the materials, I'm going to play around and put a secret or hidden texture, a clue onto the actual model that you need to find. So as part of the escape room, right there, you can see behind the breastbone, I'm putting a clue, right? Three question marks. But in the actual escape room, that is a secret clue that you need to go and find. So you can go right now, either on your desktop, your laptop, or your phone to this address, heart.blenderschool.com. And on there, you can see this 3D model and you can interrogate it. You can zoom in, move it around. And the idea is that you use this interactivity to experience what it does. The fact there's a clue hidden on it, right? And you can even click on your phone, view in your space, and you can then view it in your, on your desk. So you can use your laptop, your phone, go to the URL, find the clue that was hidden on the model, as I showed you in the previous video. Thanks, Stefan. So yeah, please do have a look at that because that's really great the way you've uh, hidden that little clue right in there. So just to conclude our presentation then, in terms of refinements, the desire to create something that can be picked up and used without setting aside 30, 40 minutes to go through equipment training has led to refinements to the initial proof of concept. For example, we did add in a great 360 resource, which allowed the HoloLens wearer to navigate virtually around a building, going up and down stairs and into different rooms. However, when we trialled it with the focus group, the mastery of the movements just proved a little bit too difficult for anyone who was unfamiliar with AR and VR movements and gestures. But I did love the immersiveness of the 360 resource, so it is something in my mind for future projects. The overall objective to make AR more accessible in education um, using Zati has enabled us to merge traditional teaching tools to the digital world of AR. 
and we've created a fun and informative escape room. 3D models can further enhance the escape room and these are available for free or create your own for more bespoke immersive learning experiences. Thank you for listening.